Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me again on my channel. So today we're going to be looking at using a gel plate. This could be a jelly plate. Some people call it a media plate, all very similar, but I'm going to be using my own brand of textures gel plate. Um, available linked down below but using this along with distress oxide if you're a complete beginner to uh, gel plate printing this is going to be ideal for you because you don't need to get super messy with all the paints and things like that you don't have to worry about the types of paint you don't even have to worry about the type of paper we're simply using printer paper um, that's really really inexpensive to create beautiful prints like these now I'm going to show you how you can create every single one of these gorgeous prints and they really take minutes because the cleanup with distress oxide is so much quicker than when you're using paint so let's get started as i said first of all you're going to need of course a gel plate a media plate uh, a jelly plate that is a brand you know there's lots of different options out there uh, and this one as i say linked down below obviously my favorite one this one comes it's uh five by seven inches so it's a really good size if you love your card making it's absolutely perfect to then cut out your prints and put onto your cards now I'm going to be mixing this along with lots of my stamps, my dies, embossing folders, stencils, you name it. There's going to be all sorts going on to hit into here, but I, essentially lots of items that you've probably already got within your stash if you are a paper crafter. You're also ideally going to need a brayer. You can do this without a brayer, but definitely this is going to take it up to the next level for you. Um, there is a textures brayer available in a bundle with the gel plate too, but definitely the bigger the brayer, the better, I think. You're going to need a piece of scrap paper here just for cleaning your brayer off. And for cleaning, ideally, some water. Now I've just filled up an old detergent bottle once that's finished, washed it up, filled it up with water so I can spray that as and when I need it. I've also got an old cloth here, an old tea towel that I use, um, and I do have some wet wipes, but I do make sure that they are like the sensitive wet wipes that don't have any alcohol in them. So if I want really, really quick clean up, I can just use those. And then lastly, the paper, because this is probably the question I get asked the most, and this is simply uh, either copy paper or printer paper. It's the thin white paper that you pop in your printer at home, um, it's really inexpensive. You get a pack of about 500 sheets for three or four pound in the supermarket. This is all you're going to need. Now you can print onto heavier weight cardstock or paper, absolutely. Things like watercolor cardstock works really well with this and um, it, it, it has a texture to it already. So it only enhances all the beautiful um, patterns and textures that you're going to get in your prints. So let's start very firstly with a basic distress oxide print using distress, oxi distress oxides. Now I've got all the colours. Um, let's go with abandoned coral. This is where I have fun mixing. Now I've put my gel plate onto my mat. Um, you want to ideally put it on something where it's going to grip. So something, a shiny surface, something like that is ideal. I'm just pressing a little bit of ink say a little bit I would say press down maybe 10 times over your gel plate you can work on either side of your gel plate as well there's no right or wrong side with them then I'm going to take my brayer make sure it's rolling smoothly because you don't want to drag the ink you just want to roll it and just start rolling one way and then we're going to work down into the other color look at that beautiful blend now if you're not overly confident with actually blending your colors either this is going to work really well for you now i'm just cleaning off my brayer onto a scrap piece of paper and essentially that is beautiful i could use that as well so sometimes i'll go back and look at my waste paper and i'll reuse that so here's my pattern now this is actually i said about using both sides of your gel plate i have actually got two sides of mine. I've got one that's a little bit damaged. It's got some nicks and nooks out of it, some scratches on it. Um, and this one has had some sort of materials or mediums on it that have damaged the surface. So I have got a good and a bad side. I've actually accidentally um, put my ink down onto the, the bad side as such. But never mind, we're going to pull this off anyway and see what it looks like, but it will have some marks in it. So it won't be a perfectly smooth um, print. But I don't mind that. I really like the distressed look. So just placing the paper on, giving it a rub with your hand. Some people like to take their brayer 
and go over it. I just, I'm quite happy to use my hands. I can feel, check there's no air bubbles under there. And then you're just going to lift off and look at that color. Now you can see where the damage is on my plate that I was talking about, but that is beautiful blending. You won't get blending like that with your blending brushes, despite all the little distressed areas, you just won't get that. So I'm going to turn this over. As I said, this side is much smoother. It has much less uh, damage to it, albeit a few bits of paper, but that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to work on this side for the remainder of the video. So that's a basic pull where you just pop your inks down, brayer them smooth, and then just pull the ink off. But we want to take this a step further now. So let's choose a couple of other colors. So seedless preserves, I'm going to go over the top and you can do two, three, four color blends if you want to. You can fill your entire gel plate if you want to with one color. I love to do the ombre look a lot of the time. So just rollering this one into the other until I've got a gorgeous ombre effect and then coming back down and you'll notice it's all smoothed out. You do have extended time with your ink there to work with it. You don't have to go straight in and be sort of worrying about very, very quickly inking into that or taking the print off now. I'm going to take a stamp. First of all, I'm going to take a clear stamp, a clean stamp, and I'm just going to press this into the surface of my plate there. So just sit that on there and just press that in. This is a photopolymer stamp from my textures range. This was from the reflections collection because you can see you've got the reflection, two halves of a heart there and then the outlines too. So I'm just pressing this one in first of all. Now, of course, being photopolymer, it's super sticky. If you have got an acrylic block that's large enough, absolutely use that. Then I'm just going to lift that up. So now all my ink is sitting on that stamp and I'll just sit that there for a moment. Let's lift this impression up and see what happens when we put a clean stamp into your brayed ink or oxide, I'm going to call it ink, but it is Distress Oxide. This will work with inks also, but I find the oxides have a smoother finish. Look at that, beautiful. You've got the image of this heart, which actually happens to have lots of letters in it, uh, just randomized letters. Just lifted the ink there so you can see through to the white paper. Now, always go over, usually you should do this with a clean piece of paper. I'm going to do it on the reverse of this. Just go over and lift off Make sure you haven't got any more ink on your plate because sometimes you'll get a second impression like so that looks sometimes even more beautiful than the first. So of course the first color, there's the second much paler, but equally as beautiful. This is what we call a ghost print and it's always worth doing. I would say do it on another piece of paper, but you get the idea. Okay, so that's what happens when you stamp into your oxide with a clean stamp. Don't forget though, we've also got this ink on our stamp. So I'm just going to place this on here. Now I don't have much ink left on my plate now because as you saw from that ghost print, we've just lifted that back off. But I just want to show you, you can also stamp onto your gel plate with colored ink as well. You don't have to just be lifting the ink off. Now I'm going to press down really hard and just see if I can get any more of that color. And I did flip it over and go to the other side. So the purple um, was on the top and the green on the bottom. And I've just flipped it so that the ink colors in the stamp were the opposite way around. So let's see if we've got anything left. Oh yes, we have. By pressing down a bit harder, we've got green ink at the bottom here and pink ink at the top echoing the colors. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so let's move on to something different. So I'm going to give this a spray and I'm just going to give that a little wipe just to take the excess off. You can see there where the water reacts with Distress Oxide, it kind of goes a creamy color. In fact, that's just reminded me, let's do this technique so. Let's put some brown on and let's go in with one of my favorite colors and that is Uncharted Mariner. So gathered twigs and Uncharted Mariner. 
on there. I have cleaned off my brayer, but I'm going to give this a bit of a spray as well, just to give that an extra clean and a wipe with my towel. And I'm going to just smooth these out. Now we're not dragging the ink, all we're doing is at each end we're lifting up and we're rolling back across the other way. We don't stop halfway through and we don't drag. So if you press down too hard and it drags on the surface, you're just going to end up with this sort of smudge line throughout your ink. Now all you want, again, something that may well be in your stash if you're a paper crafter or if not, go to the sink. Just some water. Now I've got this in a spray bottle and you can spray on the surface. Try that, try spraying on the surface, lifting it up, see what it looks like. But essentially, distress oxides react with water. So I'm going to flick some water onto the surface of the mat. So I'm going to do quite a few blobs here. We've already seen what a pull looks like, just the ink on its own. So you get that sort of nice smooth finish. So just popping these on there, giving that just a few moments to start reacting with the distress oxide the same way as it would if it was on paper. Yeah, I can just see that happening. Okay, now I can press my paper into this and you'll see the water droplets start to come through here already because I'm only using a thin paper. Press that down, make sure you're really getting all that ink up. Nice firm pressure with a flat hand. Some people like to use their knuckles like so, and like I say, some people use their brayer. Do just check every now and then, because what can happen is if this sits on here too long, it absorbs the moisture and starts drying and it can start sticking to your plate. Look at this. How stunning is that? And that's beautiful, absolutely stunning as a background. I love, love, love that. So again, let's just give this a light spritz of water. And this time I'm going to just do a second pull just to see if there's anything else left on my plate worth pulling up. I forget we've not touched any acrylic paints yet. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. There's the first and there's the second. Gorgeous. Okay, so we've used clean stamps. We've stamped on with coloured inks. What we haven't done yet is done the magazine print. This is so much fun. Now, what you're going to need is a glossy magazine and glossy is very important, so the sheets are glossy. And you're going to want to find image or text that is just black and white or grayscale, but the higher the contrast, the better. So I've got black and white here. Gorgeous. I mean, choosing the right kitchen flooring, probably not something I'm going to ever read <laughs> saying that. I'm actually doing my kitchen floor at the moment, but I know what I want. And I'm going to put um, Distress Oxide down, Black Soot. Now this is a grey really, it's a charcoal. Black Soot in Oxide is a very uh, creamy black. So I'm going to do two layers of this. So just make sure my brayer is nice and clean. I'm going to brayer this across the surface and then I'm going to add some more because I want to make sure I've got plenty of this on there. So pressing down all over. You can do this in different colours. Black is definitely the best way for me to show you this effect. Again, smooth that out. I'm going to put my print, my black and white print from my glossy magazine directly down onto my plate and burnish that. I'm going to do that really well. There we go really make sure that is well stuck down. I'm going to lift that up and I'm hoping you can see on that plate that we have got some beautiful text. So let's quickly put this on. And I say quickly because I don't want that to dry. That's now a very, very, very thin layer of paint that will dry quite quickly. So just using my fingers, lifting that up, press really hard like we saw earlier with the ghost print that we did with the heart. Press harder, you'll get a little more ink off. You want to make sure you get plenty of ink off with this one. And then, ta-da, we have got our own text paper. Isn't that beautiful? And I love that it looks a bit more vintage because you've got a few little, if you've got like me, you've got little marks and dinks, 
in on your gel plate that's going to just enhance that effect you've got a very pale gray in the background where there was some excess link ink left over on there it's so so pretty you can do that in multiple colors you could do that as an ombre in your ink like i said it doesn't have to be black try different colors you'll find different effects with that now let's go in with a stencil okay so let's start with fossilized amber and let's go bright blue for this one again i do need to i've now i've left i've left ink on there there may be just a little bit of ink left on my plate from that last pull but i'm leaving it on there it's that lovely text design anyway so that will be fine so i've got fossilized amber and salty ocean let's go through the middle we want to keep this fairly half and half really lovely okay so first thing i'm going to do is lay a stencil over the top now this is actually a die cut this is not actually a stencil i've die cut this so don't forget about your die cuts these can all be used so this is from as you can see my textures reflections range this is an a5 die it cuts beautifully i've just cut myself a piece of paper and this is going to work as a stencil for me i'm just going to press that down and use my paper here to start soaking up some of the print from between the design this is where you really need to get your fingertips in there and just press in between everything make sure you're lifting up as much as possible now in an ideal world what i would say is with your stencils or your handmade stencils your die cuts is give them a layer of clear emboss that is going to make them glossy and it's going to help with some of the further techniques you can do with stencils so i'm just going to lift this up and we see we've got that lovely print with that border now if i take this up we've got this left over so now we've got we've got some of the ink has come up on our stencil okay we're not going to be able to reuse this because it's cardstock it's soaked in it still looks beautiful though you've got lovely colors in there so i can use that on a card but or oh, i could actually i could actually reverse it and put it back in you get a bit of a white shadow on there lovely but if you were using a stencil this on here wouldn't dry because of the mylar plastic and you could print that back onto your gel plate but let's quickly lift this up that's remaining on there so press that down lift everything up so what's happened is where we've pressed our paper through our stencil and lifted up this first print see that's kind of a bit of a not a blurred image but a, it's a bit chunky it's not as fine refined as the actual stencil was uh, that's because getting the paper right into the finer detail isn't always easy so we're now left with that outline where we couldn't lift off with either the paper or the cardstock so again press down really well and look at that that's so pretty isn't it it's so dimensional now what that is is that is your ghost print underneath as your background that is then that outline that i say we couldn't quite reach when we had our stencil down and we were putting our fingers in that outline is what's left beautiful okay so just one more technique for you today then let's work with um let's work with a brown I think I'm going to go with brushed corduroy always works really well with this and again I'm leaving everything on there because there might be a bit of texture in there that um, that will lift up again so I'm going to press in here just brush corduroy all the way over first of all clean off my brayer you can give it a white or a spray if you wish quite happy for colors to remain on there there we go okay so that's all over the surface now i'm going to take an embossing folder and i am going to press into the embossing the gel plate now i'm going to press into it with the back of the embossing folder so the bit that's the detail rather than the background raised up 
So take a look at your embossing folder and work out which is best. Uh, I want that kind of central, but it doesn't matter because I will cut the design out. So I'm just going to press into this gently. I'm not pressing hard because I just want to lift off the design that's raised and stamp into that. So I'm using my embossing folder as a stamp. Okay, now let's first lift this off. Let's see what sort of image we've got there. Gorgeous, you see that print, absolutely beautiful. So then I'm going to put this back in so just back. I haven't lined it up. I don't know exactly where it is, but the ink that's left on there, I'm putting back onto my gel plate, the ink that I lifted off. And we'll see what happens with this one now. Lift this off again to keep trying, keep trying different layers, adding layer layers, doing second impressions as well. Love that one. Absolutely love that. I prefer that one to the first one because you've just got that paler background. And then let's do one more. And this time we're going to go with a darker background. Let's clean my brayer off a bit more. I've got quite a bit of yellow on there. So the darker blue background over here. Lovely. And then I'm going to use this yellow. I'm going to use the brown actually. I'm going to, it's, it's almost a yellow, the brushed corduroy. And I'm actually going to apply my ink directly to my embossing folder. And again, you can do this on both sides of the embossing folder. Experiment with each side and what patterns you prefer best. I'm not worried about being too, too precise with it. Again, pop that on. Give it a quick rub there. Now you're going to be picking up some blue ink on this. Bear that in mind. Lift that off. Let's do this impression. There we go. And then look at that. Isn't that so pretty? The detail is really, really precise with that. So a couple more very quickly, just to show you to keep going with your prints until you really don't get anything else left over. So one more here, a paler version of what we've just done. And then of course, I've got some more on here. So I'm going to press this back down onto my plate keep pressing keep pressing lift that up I've still got more I can play with that in a little while one more impression on here and you can go in and you can do other stamps there as well if you wanted to you don't have to just do one impression each time I could have pressed this one in look at that one stunning so so pretty so all of these all five of these have just come from starting with that one impression. So we have one ghost print. Uh, I think it was, I can't even remember which order we did it in. Anyway, either way, so much that comes from just one tool, as you can see. Now, like I say, you can go in and you can put your ink on there and then you can do your water flicking and then you can stamp with a black and a red and a blue before you lift your print. You can really add so much texture. And we have done so much uh, since I just started this video. Let's just look back quickly at everything we've done. So the basic pull, we've got that heart, that heart stamp that I did. We've got the, did we just do one side of that? Look at this. This was probably my favorite, I think, of all of them. Then we've got the stencil, we've got the text as well. We've got uh, all, oh, that one was one of my favorites as well. That one was beautiful. You can snip into these. They can be used as scraps cards. They can be complete backgrounds for cards. There's so, so much you can do. And lastly, 
take a look, always take a look at the paper you've been brayering on as well, because you never know, there might be some elements on here you'd like to cut out, die cut, use on your mixed media projects. You know, really, the choice is yours. There's so, so much you can do with a gel plate. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. Um, like I say, everything's linked down below. Now, this is not only your Distress Oxides, but also the gel plate as well. That is linked below. All of the stamps and the dyes as well. You'll find that under the Textures brand. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned something. Leave me a comment. Drop me a thumbs up if you did like this and you'd like to see more. And uh, please do subscribe so you can see more videos like this in the future. Take care, everybody. I'll see you again very soon.